the Maoris can sing that song because they, they know who they are like you know we don't have that confidence like we like to call ourselves the Celtic people and there's some truth in that but it's not the whole story the Celts arrived three and a half thousand years ago Newgrange is five thousand years old let's do the numbers together there's a 1500 year gap between who we are and who we think we fucking are. <laughs> we were here before we were fucking here. <laughs> They've just discovered an old trading route from North Africa to the West Coast. That's where we're from. We're not Celts. We're anemic Algerians. <laughs> And if you ever went to Algeria, you'd feel at home. You'd be destroyed in the heat, but you'd feel at home. Cause it's the same broke ass, do nothing outside or sing along a country as we have. Ireland has always been about people coming. Every six or seven hundred years they come. Sometimes they do be bad bastards, but that's the chance you fucking take living on an island. <laughs> Going all the way back. The two of the Dunne, the Malaysian, Fomorians, Algerians, Celts, Normans, Vikings. Nasasani! And then our Polish brothers and sisters <laughs> heard the call and came running. Just what we fucking needed. A bit of vitamin Polski. Oh yeah! <laughs> Mad for muscles, the Polish cunts. Morning, noon, and night. Lifting shite. They don't have any flexibility at all. <laughs> But that's the price you pay for the big Biskepskis. <laughs> we can use this to our advantage. You load the truck there, Pavel, I'll keep watch. <laughs> and the women. Was there ever anything like the Polish women? Jesus Christ. Even the ugly ones are good looking. <laughs> And the better looking they are, the more serious the expression on their faces. <laughs> well, it's taken Irish men a long time to learn how to deal with the Polish women. Because they're straight to business, them lassies. No fucking messing. <laughs> I want you. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> you caught me on the hop there, Magda. <laughs> You want me to what? Leave out the bins or something, is it? <laughs> Take off your clothes. Cop on, girl. Fucking cop on. <laughs> I won't get the horn if you keep talking to me like that. <laughs> I know me own body, Magda. You frightened the horn out of me, so you have. <laughs> I need to chase you around the field or something. Come on. <laughs> just to get the blood flowing to the teapot. Go on, Magda. Go on, Magda. I won't hurt you. I'll have a muzzle on. I'll nudge you, but I won't hurt. <laughs> Take tablet for horn. No. I'm not going near that shit. I overdosed the last time. I had a horn for six weeks. I couldn't walk near the end of it. I had no blood left in me legs or nothing. Mammy had to get the bishop round <laughs> to do an exorcism on it. He thought the devil was inside me, Mickey. <laughs> well, he got me down in the front room and started talking Latin to it. I seen the devil fly out. <laughs> Little silvery cunt, he flew out of me, Mickey. <laughs> and into a pig that ran straight off a cliff. That's a fact. <laughs> you compared the Polish women To a good looking Irish girl. Beautiful Irish girl has got a smile on her face. 
all the time. Because she can't believe her luck. <laughs> a good looking Irish girl sees the other women in her own family and she's thinking, I'm not related to that. I mean, I love them and all, but I'm not related to that. <laughs> Seriously, Mammy, look at my face and look at your face. We're not related. Tell me exactly what you did at the hospital because you came home at the wrong baba, Mama. I know you did. <laughs> Every house in the state in the country has a genuine ride inside in it, doesn't it? <laughs> Could be a poor council estate or a posh gated community, but there's one genuine, thoroughbred, Rosa Tralee Irish ride inside in it. <laughs> and there's a place for these women. But reading the news on RTE television, <laughs> at six o'clock in the evening should not be fucking one of them. <laughs> Sharon Di Viola needs to be let go because I can't concentrate on a word the girl is saying she's that gorgeous. <laughs> How are you supposed to weep for Africa? <laughs> and it needs weeping for when she's got the false eyelashes, the mascara, the black s and polo neck and a fucking gamey look in her eye as well. <laughs> No, it's rough looking women we need reading the news. <laughs> With a black eye and three missing teeth. <laughs> Shouting down the camera. You think you have it bad, do you? You moany fuck, you. Where do you see this poor bastard? Roll the tape. <laughs> Look, he's only got one leg and the cunt in the tank is still fucking showing the hammer. <laughs> Now for the weather, it'll be pissing rain all the way. <laughs> it's a big, big year in Ireland this year. Uh, we're celebrating, uh, we're marking 100 years since the Easter Rising of 1916. An, an amazing revolution because the men and women who began it knew it was doomed to failure. But they hoped, they put their lives on the line so that one day in the future, Irish people could fuck up their own country by themselves. <laughs> but I find the whole idea of anniversaries quite strange because they're not real, are they? They're an act of collective imagination. Like we all decide, because somebody else tells us to, to think about the same shit at the same time. Like, how can you put something as rigid as time on something as fluid as memory? And I have to be honest with you, I fucking struggle with this part of the show myself. But... <laughs> <laughs> there will be. There's lots of things you can celebrate, you know. If we celebrate 1916, we wouldn't have to celebrate the Great War of Independence, where freedom was actually achieved. And then we're going to have to celebrate the Civil War, where the English were gone, but we still had the guns. <laughs> so we said, well, we fucking shoot one another for a while, we win. <laughs> <laughs> and then things went quiet up until about 1990 and we qualified for the World Cup. So these are all <laughs> The markers ahead of us, you know, I, things are like always changing and, and Democracy, I suppose, gives people a, an opportunity to, to have a say in the way th their country is, is run. You know, like uh, England or the UK or whatever the fuck you're most comfortable calling yourselves. Um, most recently voted to leave Europe. Where will they go? <laughs> they can't stay here, lads. <laughs> you have to fuck off. <laughs> Pull anchor and fucking sail away. Now, we give you a good send off when you're passing by Ireland. Good luck now. <laughs> don't rush back, you'll be grand. Go on, off you go. We'll fill in the gap, don't you worry. <laughs> and there's going to be changes, you know. Unfortunately, it meant the end uh, of David Cameron, and I liked him. I loved David Cameron because allegedly, when he was young, he put his willy <laughs> in a dead pig's mouth. That's exactly the type of man I can follow. 
someone who's prepared to go that extra inch. <laughs> He's precisely the person you needed sitting across the table from Angela Merkel during tough EU negotiations. <laughs> I've done it before, Angela. <laughs> I'll fucking do it again, I will, I will. We have an interesting relationship with celebrity here. It's just not the same, it's, it's ordinary. It's just like, oh, there's your man. Doesn't this fucking you live another type of life bullshit that you get in other countries, you get in places like America? Whereas these celebrities are suffused with fucking stupidity and insincerity. Sharon Stone was fronting this campaign in Los Angeles called We All Have AIDS. That was an invert. And it was photographs of celebrities, famous fuckers who don't have AIDS. <laughs> Besides skinny dying fuckers who do. We all have AIDS. I'm a celebrity. You must care about all these people like I do. Would you ever fuck off? <laughs> I... I don't have AIDS. I have hay fever. <laughs> That's my burden, baby, and it's enough to be fucking dealing with. <laughs> you get the impression that maybe Bono does actually care, though, don't you? The end of the next U2 show is incredible. The Edge gets his guitar at the end. Where the streets have no name. Where the fuck is that? <laughs> Who would want to live there? Is it Tala? <laughs> the Edge gets his guitar. He turns it into a rocket. It goes flying up into space. And it explodes a planet that you two have rented off God. <laughs> all these poor people fall out. And Bono catches them all. <laughs> Edge! Edge! Would you? Ah, oh, fuck you! <laughs> New York last summer, I experienced hot rain. Hot fucking rain. Why not just have soup falling from the sky? <laughs> With croutons for the homeless. There you go! <laughs> Told you I'd mind you. Hot rain! If we had hot rain in Ireland, people will be standing outside with huge fucking tea bags. <laughs> God has put the kettle on. <laughs> tea for everybody. <laughs> but now we've stopped drinking tea and look what's happened to us. Huh? Everybody's drinking fucking coffee now. And Everyone's got a fucking job and plans and stuff to do. Back in the day, back in the fucking day, <laughs> when we were all drinking tea, we got that same sense of job satisfaction that people get now from having high careers. We used to get that by doing simple shit, letting the fucking cat out, <laughs> opening a window. Other countries, that was the only place we worked hard. Other fucking countries. <laughs> Ireland was our little fucking secret. <laughs> we work, work like anything in other countries. I remember one time being in Barcelona, working on a, on a site for the Olympic Village, and we built what became the tallest hotel in Barcelona. Now it wasn't supposed to be. They only ordered a bungle up, we just got fucking carried away. <laughs> Loads. Loads of other peoples started joining us. We had French fuckers, Germans, Portuguese, Italian and Spanish. Crews from all over the world. And a Spanish guy slipped and fell to his death. We were the only crew that kept working. We just kept fucking going. The Spanish got thick and started throwing rocks up at us. Hey! Hey, malatos, patatos! <laughs> malatos, patatos, mañanos, salatos! Jesus, he matado, hey, malatos! We were there, hey, fucking relax, would you? You wouldn't throw us up a brick, would you? <laughs> the 
then we saw that they were having a drink for the man. We put the fucking tools out. We'll never. We'll never see the like of him again, will we? The GAA is a, an, an amazing thing. It's, it's, a, it's very different to the English Premiership and stuff like that. It's, first of all, it's amateur. And the game, the, the, the best game that we have is hurling. Hurling is kind of like, if you can imagine, 30 chimps <laughs> trying to play golf with the one ball. Uh, <laughs> there's a wild, savage madness to it. But there's beauty in it as well. I had the privilege last September of being at the All Ireland hurling final between Galway and Waterford. And there was an amazing moment in the second half of the match. The ball is on the ground. It's the size of an apple, a kind of a leathery apple. And he has a stick in him called a hurl. And he hits the, hits the ball in such a way, he lifts it off the ground and spins through the air on a kind of an arc to score. It was incredible. I was talking to a blind man from Abbey Knock Moy, the far side of Clare Galway. He was blind since day one, and he'd be blind till he dies. And he told me that that sideline cut was that fucking miraculous that he's seen it. So that's... That's the level of artistry we're talking about. The score lines in the GAA are more like train timetables. Limerick, 419. Cork, 122. I had the misfortune a few days after the All-Ireland hurling final to be watching an Irish Republic of Ireland soccer friendly against Georgia. We're always playing fucking Georgia. Every eight months, guess who? The fucking Georgians, okay. It was a nil all draw. A nil all draw. What's the point in that? What's the point in playing a game where the score at the end is the same as if you'd never fucking played at all? You never get two tennis players just staring at one another for an hour and a half and then go, well, call it quits, you're too hard to base, okay. <laughs> what the big difference, of course, is the amateur status. We're all big soccer fans in Ireland, you know. We grow up supporting English clubs. And maybe if we're lucky enough as adults, we get the money together and get to come over to Stamford Bridge, Old Trafford or Anfield and stand there and sing songs. Sing songs at millionaires in shorts from Peru and Afghanistan who couldn't give a fuck about you. You go down to your local GAA pitch, they'd better give a fuck about you. <laughs> run, you fat bastard, run. <laughs> Jesus Foley, look at the size of your hole. Run, you fat fuck. <laughs> I know where you live, Foley. I know where you fucking live. <laughs> well, I'm his father, of course, I know where he lives. <laughs> run, you fuck, you. If you can't do big mad things, it's as well to know mad people, isn't it? And the problem is, as you get older, I suppose your life gets more kind of settled and you, you, you edge the lunacy out of your life because you want to keep your home safe and in order and working properly. I have one mad friend left from my early 20s and he's wild. He's full of this ferocious sexual energy, but it's not wrapped up in any charm. It's in its raw, unprocessed state. <laughs> Women find him repulsive. Give us a go of your tits, come on! <laughs> Give you an example of, of what he's like. I was working over in London recently, and for some strange reason, the BBC had given me two tickets to go back to Ireland. So Brendan was over there at the time, and I said to him, listen, do you want to come back to Dublin for the weekend of an extra ticket? He said, I'd love to. So the two of us and I got drunk. And we'd have just barely gone to sleep and the phone rang in the hotel room and it was the room service people saying, oh, your, your taxi is here. So we got up and we just about got in to the taxi cab and we were just about made it to the airport. We were the last people on the flight, first class British Airways. You know the English, they're so posh and magnificent with their big, huge heads. <laughs> and they're tiny fingers. <laughs> they're like T-Rexes. <laughs> well, myself and Brendan walked on like two fellas auditioning for IRA Idol. 
we, we sat down in our seats. Uh, you know when you're hungover and you know what you want to say. You can see the sentence in front of you. But it just takes too much effort to say the whole thing. So you just pull a few words here and there. You throw them together and you hope it makes sense. What he meant to say to me, what he meant to say was, Tommy, did you ever come home at night and make love to your girlfriend when initially she doesn't want to be made love to? Okay? <laughs> That's what he meant to say. You must also remember that his ears had popped and he had no idea how loud he was actually speaking. <laughs> so he roars, did you ever rape somebody? Full of lunatics. 